Welcome to Civil Spedia, the current affairs digital library powered by Shankar AAS Academy. As part of today's discussion, we look at Prime Minister Kanij Shetra Kalyan Yojana, Kardungla and Global Youth Development Index, Bandipur Tiger Reserve. And finally, as part of mains, we'll discuss a Hindu article of the root cause of corruption. First, let us discuss this Prime Minister or Pradhan Mantri Kanij Shetra Kalyan Yojana. It comes under the Ministry of Mines of Government of India. We should know that this project or this program is for the welfare of people and also areas. People and also areas affected by mining related operations. And it is based on this welfare activities are carried out using the funds that is accrued to this district mineral foundation this district mineral foundation was established by section 9 capital b of mines and minerals development and regulation act of 1957 section 9 capital b was inserted in this legislation in this in this in this act in the year 2015 by way of an amendment and uh, this program, the objectives of the program is to implement various developmental and welfare projects in mining affected areas and to mitigate the adverse impacts, particularly this talks about the environment, environmental health and socio-economic aspects of the people who are affected by mining operations and to ensure long-term sustainable livelihoods for the affected people. What we have to know that, know is that uh, this funds are accrued in this, the funds accrued in district mineral foundation come from the royalty that is paid by those who hold the mining lease and this prime minister this pradhan mandri kanij shetra kalyan yojana will be implemented by the through the funds by the district mineral foundation what we have to keep in mind is 60 percent of the fund will be utilized for high priority areas and these areas were called as high priority areas. The PowerPoint presentation will be available in the YouTube description. And there, the remaining areas are called as other priority areas. And uh, there could be a question like whether these four areas come under high priority area of the government under the Ministry of Mines in this particular program. There could be a question on it. And with this, we come to the end of this topic. Next, we'll discuss Kardung law. This law in Tibetan language means pass. This is a very important pass in the Ladakh region in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. It also finds a mention in the NCRT textbook. And it is called as the gateway of this Nubra and Shok valleys. It is also called as the gateway of Siachen Glacier as well. And it is located at an altitude of 5,602 meters. But this is also being disputed by several other passes in the world. And it is also claimed as high motorable pass in the world, which again is disputed. Historically, this pass is a major caravan route between Le and Kashkar in Central Asia. And this pass was made motorable, or the motor road in this pass was built in the year 1976, and it was open to motor vehicles in the year 1988. Several attempts were made to build roads in this particular pass by the government of India since 1963. Because when, when, when we construct a road, an avalanche happens. Even this pass was recently in news because of an avalanche. And uh, this, this pass was now maintained by this border roads organization. Strategically located because we said it is, all, it is called as gateway of the Siachen Glacier. Whatever, whatever, whatever material we take to Siachen Glacier, we have to traverse through this Kardung La Pass. That is the strategic position within within which the within the location of this Kardungla pass next we'll discuss global 
Youth Development Index. First, we have to know who prepares or who publishes this report wherein this index was talked about. This was published by the Commonwealth Secretariat located in London, UK. And herein they are discussing the age of the youth. What we have to keep in mind is globally, there is no agreement over the age in which the definition for youth, right? If you look at this slide, we can see that according to the Commonwealth, the age is 15 age for youth is between 15 to 29 even if you look at the various bodies or programs in united nation there are there is no concord or agreement for example for un habitat youth fund it is between 15 to 32 for un population fund it is between 10 to 24 and again, in the, for UNESCO, it is 15 to 24. So globally, there is no agreement. And for this particular index, they have taken the age between 15 to 29. All right? And it is a composite index of 18 indicators in five domains. These domains, they could ask in a civil services exam because previously for global hunger index, they have asked about which of the following are indicators. And similarly, there could be a question on which one of the following is a domain or not a domain coming under this index report. Education, health and well-being, employment and opportunity, political participation and civic participation. For example, civic participation in this report actually had two indicators, one of which is whether the youth himself or herself have volunteered for a social cause. And this is one indicator coming under civic participation. And it talks about NEET rate. The expansion of NEET here is not in education, employment and training. Actually, it means the youth who are in work, youth who are working, no, who are not in education or employment or training. They, for, for the source for this information is International Labour Organization, OECD, etc. And... Uh, what we have to keep in mind is three-fourth of the youth population in South Asia are in India. That is 345 million out of 477 million youth are Indians in Southern Asia. All right. And India, the India's rank is 133 out of 183 countries with a score of 0.548. And within the Commonwealth countries, the score of India is 34 out of 49 countries which participated out of the overall 53 nations in the members in the Commonwealth countries. And with this, we come to the end of this discussion. Next, we'll talk about this Bandipur Tiger Reserve. It is located in Karnataka. Prior to which, we'll see tiger is our national animal. And Indian government resolved a solid support in the form of Project Tiger in the year 1973. In the year 1973, almost nine places were notified as Tiger Reserve, of which Bandipur is also one of them. And later, at present, in the, as on June 2018, there were around 50 Tiger Reserves in India, according to Government of India. And uh, presently, there are five tiger reserves in the state of Karnataka. And these are the five tiger reserves. Bandipur. The core area of this uh, Bandipur tiger reserve is located in Bandipur National Park. And what we have to keep in mind is this section 38 capital V of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 states that the state government shall prepare a, tri a tiger conservation plan. It was recently in news because of a proposal endorsed by the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways about you know constructing a, a, a road pathway through this tri Bandipur Tiger Reserve. Whereas the Ministry of Environment, uh, Environment, Forest and Climate Change has not endorsed it or is acting against it. And therefore, it was in news. We have to keep in mind where this tiger reserve comes. And 5 out of 50 tiger reserves in India are in the state of Karnataka.
and with this uh, we come to the end of this discussion and this bandipur tiger reserve alone has around some 120 to 150 tigers next we'll discuss the main article given in the hindu newspaper the root cause of corruption according to this author the author talks about the corruption perception index 2017 where india stands and also about the top 10 countries and also the countries that share the rank that india has scored for example india's score is 40 out of 100 see the value of zero means highly corrupt and a value of 100 means very clean country or no corruption and india's rank is 81 out of 180 the same rank is scored by ghana morocco and turkey and this corruption perception index 2017 was released by this transparency international a coalition against global coalition against corruption and the author's main or his main theme or his main point is that corruption is directly proportional to the socio-economic gap or inequality in a country whatever the cultural or historical factors are there it could only add add or subtract to this socio-economic disparity and the more the socio-economic disparity the greater is the is the incentive for corruption what we have to keep in mind is the author was talking about uh, historical factors or cultural factors that would that could have an impact on corruption because historically we had in india and uh, some other countries the colonial rule or feudal rule wherein we could find the top down power structures one important thing is that here the voices of the poor or the voices of the people in the lower level according to this top-down power structure or those who are in the bottom would have no voice or their voice would have been deliberately silenced and that is one 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 form of historical factor which could have added to the present day corruption and the unresponsive authoritarianism wherein there is no transparency no possibility of asking any reason behind uh, scheme or an announcement or whatever it could it could also have a, a point of uh, influencing corruption because when there is unresponsive unresponsive authoritarianism there would be breaking of laws and when there are breaking of laws when it is unchecked by by judiciary it could lead more people to involve in corruption for example whenever there whenever the access to justice or whenever the offenders or go unpunished whenever the offender whenever the justice is not swift not fair and not certain their breaking of laws or breaking of rules will be common and it will have a direct implication for corruption however the author's point is that most of the time most important component for corruption is the social economic disparity within our country and uh, this disparity what we have to keep in mind is uh, we talk about economic disparity and social disparity and within the economic disparity according to the oxfam report if we go by it in the year 2017 of the total wealth that is generated in our country 73 percent of the total wealth generated in our country in 2017 has went to richest one percent in the country that is how the inequality is now widening and also deepening and coming to this uh, bridging or this reducing or this removing social inequality what we have to keep in mind is that how far access to justice is is available for people in various sections people in various religions whether minority could get access to justice not just access to the judicial institutions justice it is also part of a target under sustainable development goal for example what we have to see is whether the people from people who are transgenders or people who are sexual minorities or people who are religious minorities or people who belong to the scheduled caste or the scheduled tribes were able to get the appropriate judgments or the 
judgments or access to justice in judicial institutions. Coming to economic point of view, what we have to keep in mind is in every sphere, for example, say in judiciary, how many of the people from say minorities or say from the scheduled caste or the scheduled tribes or say from differently abled communities or friends or fraternity or from transgender fraternity have entered into this judicial institutions as judges or as advocates. There are several connotations. Most of the time we do not have a data segregation or segregated data for all these parameters. This we have to keep in mind and we have to be inclusive at all these domain. And according to the author, if India is going to take a step against corruption, what it has to do is actually it has to take a step to reduce or to remove socio-economic disparity among its people. And, and, and he also states that whenever, uh, say for example, an amount of say 10,000 is not a matter for the rich person in India and whenever the same amount is, is being say monthly salary for one poor person and there is demand and there is supply for corruption. But if there is no inequality, even though there could be a demand, there would be no supply. Even though there could be supply, there would be no demand. At that time, there would be no corruption because there is no inequality. That is what the author means to say. And with this, uh, when, but whenever there is social disparity, what happens is that there will be a mass lack of interest among the people in, people in our country towards the demand for greater transparency in the corridors of power or in the, for our, or those in the authority. However, whenever the, and he also states that the top 10 countries in the corruption perception index of 2017 who have performed well, 9 out of top 10 countries are European states or European settler states, wherein there is, there is no, not much inequality or wherein people get economic and social justice, which is not the case with our country. And whenever that happens, Whenever there is less inequality or whenever there is no inequality, there would be no corruption. With this, we come to the end of this discussion. We request you to like our video, comment our video and also to subscribe to our Shankara Ace Academy YouTube channel for more updates and content on civil services preparation.